Hello everyone, my name is Sirani and I'm here to present my master's thesis and the title is the local probing of dynamic stage transition by repeated partial information laser. It's not internet slide. Okay, but yeah. Well, you know, you should be sure. Sorry, can can you hear Lalo? Yes. Okay. Okay, so we will start by defining what ergodicity is and what are the ergodic and non ergodic phases. And then we will uh, discuss some more, more commonly used probing techniques to detect these dynamic phases. And the second part of the presentation, I have presented the model, the local probing protocol. And finally, we will see some results and I will continue my presentation. Okay, so ergodicity is basically the ability of the system to explore its entire phase space. Uh, with, with the uniform probability and, uh, and the randomly. So it means that the time you will use to the, the time expectation value of an observable O is equal to the micro canonical expectation value. Or, or in other words, we can say that the time evolution is basically constructing the thermal state. By a quantum mechanical system, by a quantum system we, we know that the time evolution is actually your unitary, and which means that the system is actually preserving its initial information. And so the, the, the thermalization can be described using eigenstate thermalization hypothesis, which says that for a, for a small energy window, these matrix elements are approximately constant. And so we can take them out of the submission. And uh, again, the definition of ergodicity is, uh, uh, is applicable. And again, the definition of ergodicity is that it's applicable while non ergodic phases are those. We do not explore the entire phase space, rather they restrict they are restricted to some parts of restricted to a subsystem of the phase space. And this figure is basically demonstrating the difference between ergodic and non-ergodic uh, ergodic phases. Uh, initially considered we have um, non-uniform particle density where the blues uh, the blue gets to present a cluster of particles and each followed by an empty site. In the time evolution, we can have two scenarios first. That the, uh, that the uniform that the particle density will get uniform in the second case and uh, it, actually the system is uh, erasing its initial information in the second case the system is retaining its initial information so here the system is an ergodic phase where the system is a non ergodic phase okay so non ergodic phases are basically ambient and stimulus and they both do not obey eigenstate thermalization hypothesis MDL was introduced in 1958 by Anderson, who, who, uh, described, uh, um, who described the disordered, the behavior of dis disordered many particle, um, many part non-interacting many particle systems. And he said that basic idea was that if say, particles are living on the rugged energy landscape, any, any change in the arrangement of the particle will basically change the energy of the system, which is not possible as the energy is conserved. So uh, basically, uh, well, 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 the, as a result, the particles are restricted. So the, 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 the basic question that, that, they, that, they, that, was, uh, that, that one can ask is, if we, if we like tune some interaction between these particles, will the MBL phase still persist or will it like vanish? And in 2005, a group of scientists proved that for non zero temperature and the some degree of interaction, we still can have the ambient scale. Uh, while it is true that if the system is attached to a thermal bar, the ambient will vanish, the ambient phase will vanish. Uh, the spin glass phase, on the other hand, is uh, it, it came to an existence when the system is coupled with a low temperature uh, bar and below a, a critical temperature. Which is known as the freezing, the freezing temperature. Um, the system basically the interaction simultaneously try to minimize and it, it, this, um, uh, this um, try to minimize and it end up and the system end up in many low energy um, in energy states. 
with, with huge energy barriers between them. Um, the, the energy barriers are proportional to the system size. Unlike uh, real phase, this phase exists in both open and closed uh, systems. Okay, and these are some, I have here listed some probing, uh, the most common probing techniques for, for detecting of the organic and non organic phases. The, for the natural one is to look for the, the, the thermal conductivity of the system. If the system is thermal, if the system thermal conductivity is not zero, it is an ergodic phase. If it's zero, then it's non ergodic The second thing is to look and calculate the entanglement entropy. Entanglement entropy is basically telling us how the different, uh, the subsystem of, of this, uh, the substitute that the, that the system is made of, the, uh, how, how it is basically telling, telling us the extent of entanglement between the subsystem and uh, entanglement entropy in ergodic system, it obeys the volume law, while in non ergodic system, it obeys the it obeys area law. Uh, recently, another probing technique was uh, introduced, and it was basically to study the response of eigenvalues of an unperturbed Hamiltonian to a local perturbation. So what they are doing is that they are representing the eigenstate of the system as uh, vertices of the network. And then by looking like uh, if the and then like the perturbation effect is is kind kind of like the probe uh, is like the hopping problem between different um, eigenvalues and eigenvalues and nm. Okay, and uh, finally we have adjacent gap ratio. So in this system, in, in this case, we uh, arrange our energy eigenvalues in ascending order. Then we find the gap between them, and finally. We take the average between the maximum uh, from the minimum and maximum between these adjacent ga gaps. And the and the ergodic and non the distinction between a thermalizing and non-thermalizing phases is made uh, based on the numerical value of um, this um, adjacent gap ratio. Our proposal is to is basically um, uh, focusing on the local observable, and we are looking at the local observable when it will converge with the passage of time or not. And on the basis of that, we will make our decision if, the, if our system is ergodic, an, an ergodic phase or non ergodic. And the motivation of local probing method it was from this article where they are looking for the performance of a quantum reservoir computer be, uh, based, uh, based on, the, on which dynamical phase the reservoir computer is. And the reservoir computer is basically a natural computer. Uh, um, and, and it, they, they, with the ability with, with some memory and the quantum reservoir computing is a machine learning approach designed to exploit the dynamics of the, of the quantum system. Okay, for the reservoir, uh, it, the, like uh, the, the national um, system must exhibit some conversions because if we want to train our system, we want it to like it, it should be able to forget its initial state. Um, so the conversion property is crucial here. And so to find the convergence, what we are doing is, uh, what, what they did is uh, they considered two different initial states of the system, row A and row B, and they have initially some distance between them. And by feeding the same input sequence to each initial state, they are looking at the distance between the, these states are uh, decreasing with the passage of time or not. If the distance is decreasing, then we are, we are seeing that the system is in thermalizing phase, otherwise it's in delocalized phase. Okay, this is the model of our system. It's a, a transfer field uh, icing model where n is the number of uh, total spins. Here n is uh, for, for our results, n is always equal to seven. H is the transfer magnetic field. D B I is the on-site uh, the on-site disorder. And the combined B I and H gives us the on-site magnetic field, which is represented by H I. Where D I can take its value from uh, from minus W to W and W represents the disorder strength. And the phase space diagram for this is here. This region is basically the spin is representing spin glass, while these two are the ergodic regions, and the one uh, the region one is MBL, and this is the transition region. So if we are so the points we will be okay, I will come back to this. The local uh, probing protocol is basically we consider two uh, initial states of the system represented by rho L uh, at time zero. L is L can take value one and two. And then we, we get our system to evolve unitarily. And then, so from T to T, T plus off, we get our system to evolve unitarily. And then we choose randomly one qubit 
of this uh, of, of, from this network if we change reset the state of this to one one is not like one is like um, an easy choice it's not like necessary it should be one so we, we change the we reset the state of this qubit and we once again let the system to evolve and we and th th this process is done for row one and row two and we can for after each resetting and the time evolution we are actually uh, calculating for the spin expectation value of another qubit which is randomly selected and this qubit is known as like the uh, this is called the test qubit so here what we are doing is we are taking partial trace over i so we are like removing the contribution of this qubit from our system and then we are replacing the contribution of this qubit by a new by a new state the reset state and then we are evolving it for a period of delta t where k is actually representing uh, in the input number so the the first time if i'm changing the reset if i'm resetting the state of the system k is one and the second time is k two and three and so on Okay, these are the cases that we are, so we have we are considering through two cases. Case A is represented is, is the case when both the initial state row one and row two are actually that the qubits are jet polarized. Where in case B, in both the initial state, the cases, the, the qubits are in multiplication state. And these values, if we can go to the to the phase space diagram, we can see like the first value we are starting from here. From W 0 0.01 and H is also 0 0.01, and here we will be moving upward. So we are considering four points starting from the spin club and then moving towards the ergodic. And here, once again, we will be starting from the um, from the W5 and um, with H5 and W is, uh, let me see what the values of W are. Okay, so. When H is 5 and W is 0 0.1, we are in the ergodic phase, but by changing the value of W while keeping H constant, we are actually moving towards the transition region. And then once again, here in the MBL phase, we start in the transition region and we go towards it uh, phase in deep in the, uh, like in the MBL phase. Okay, so case A, ergodic phase. <laughs> so this, the notation is basically we have two substitutes. The first one is representing the state, like if you are looking this one, this one is representing the qubit number, and this one is the density, uh, uh, the density matrix. So for the first case, when the density matrix is one and the qubit number is one, we are calculating the spin uh, two sigma t expectation value with w zero point one and h is five. And we can see here, this is the zooming window, uh, the for this panel, we can see that the dynamics are like. Uh, the, the, the two tra trajectories are overlapping. While if we increase the W slowly, there is a fair distance between the two um, the, the, the two tra trajectories, and the distance is increasing with the passage of time. Here, one uh, one can like it, it seems that they are overlapping, but again, we can see that the, the, the two trajectories are moving independently. So the system is like our prediction was that the system should behave ergot um, in the ergodic phase. The system should um, in each of the a thermalizing uh, state, and it is in reaching the thermalized phase. Okay, in spin glass, so we are once again looking at qubit number one. Here, uh, qubit one was uh, in, in, when the, the density matrix is one, it is, uh, it is um, in the down state, and the density matrix two is in the up state, and usually, and they, they are in heavy density, that even after like uh, at 600 times that there is a dip, there, there is a distance between there is a gap between these two trajectories, and as we increase the view, the gap is closing, and finally the two states overlap. Because from starting from the uh, the spin glass, then we then when the view is 0.7, we are actually entered into the ergodic phase. And for the MBL phase, we are doing the the distance between the two trajectories, uh, like there, there is some dynamics. And then we move, when we move to the deep end and to the MBA phase, the dynamics is like decreasing and the like it's like it's decreasing drastically. And if, if, if we can see the, if you look at these two panels, they like this the, the value is approximately sticking to its initial uh, initial scale. And this is again for the qubit number one. 
Okay, this was this was just to represent that initially the the, the two density matrices uh, were set for the rise. Uh, the the qubits were set for the rise. So the density, the, so the sigma x and sigma y value initially was zero, which which will remain zero for the in, like for the entire time. Uh, they, this was just like representing in the ergodic phase, but it's the same in the spin glass and in the in the phase. And similar, a similar uh, is for the sigma y value. Sigma y value also will remain zero throughout the time. So now we are looking at case B, the ergodic phase. And uh, here, they remember that this, the, the um, qubits are in the superposition states. So, once again, the system will overlap, the two trajectories will overlap in the ergodic phase. And as we are moving towards the transition region, the gap between the two trajectories is like more and more uh, like visible. And here initially, like the sigma x, the sigma y values are non-zero because the system was in the superposition uh, phase, and um, the, because of the, because the, but but the, the input sequence that we are injecting into the into the system, the, the state is basically z for the right. So the sigma y value is actually converging to uh, zero with the passage of time. Okay, and uh, again. Like this will not be if we look at the zooming pictures of e 3.10 and, and the thesis, these figures like uh, are not that much um, like these these figures are overlapping to the to the extent of 10 to the power of 10 to the power of minus 5. The distance is much much uh, small while when you look at these uh, trajectories, project, the distance is much larger compared to the, the first panel. And spin glass, uh, and okay, so here we can see that when W is much much smaller, the H I is basically much much smaller than the interaction between the qubits. And so the Hamiltonian, we can draw the second term of the Hamiltonian, and now Hamiltonian is um, is commuting, is commuting with the sigma z, and so the time will change, and the sigma x, the expectation value of sigma x is actually zero. And we can see this in the first panel. Where the, the expectation value of sigma x of the qubit uh, of qubit number two is barely moving from its initial state, like this, where it's a, like a, uh, the, the two lines are moving parallel. And as W is increasing, we can see some dynamics in the uh, in the figure. And uh, once again, the, it's the same result for MDL phase and case B. The distance between the two trajectories is, uh, is increasing with the passage of time as we move to an independent real phase. And uh, finally, so the the local probing technique is uh, uh, that, that that we proposed is basically uh, useful in most of the cases. In some cases, uh, we do get some uh, uh, like the, some behavior which is like. Uh, if, if, if you can look at the first uh, figure of my thesis, the the, the qubits is uh, the expectation value is actually it's just a noise, but maybe that's because of the number of realization because all these results are only for one realization. So if we average them out, uh, these uh, the, the 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 result that 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 are not like that much they will cancel out, and so we are actually. Uh, with a much computation, uh, with the much low computation cost, we are uh, looking at the convergence property of um, our system, and we are actually exploring the fading memory pro fading memory property. And uh, we saw that the ergodic and ergodic phase, the localized the the local uh, the degrees of freedom will converge to a point, uh, and they will like uh, move to a thermalizing state. While in MDA and spin glass. The, this property lacks, and further uh, in this direction can be this and this direction can be done if we change, increase the system, the size of the subsystem, and uh, look at observable size. Please. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. We can start with the questions. Can we start with now? Gonzalo, can you hear us? Yes. Yes. Uh, start. Yes, please. Okay. 
your presentation and congratulations for arriving until the end of the master, which I think sometimes can be challenging. And yeah, I just have some questions. Uh, they get reading the, the report and during the presentation. So let me just go through them. Um, so first thing is uh, in uh, both in the introduction of the, the document of, of your report and in the and, and here you do mention um, the the agent state thermalization hypothesis uh, but i didn't get exactly how do you connect it uh, with uh, with the property of ergodicity can you explain it a, a little bit more i didn't get where are you talking about this slide the one with the this one, yeah. Uh, see if you can explain how how do you connect the agent state thermalization hypothesis with the property of ergodicity of the system? Oh, so they, they are like the in quantum system. They said that like uh, at the time evolution is unitary, so uh, the system is actually preserving its initial its uh, initial information. But in a Gordic system, we said that as the system is uh, uh, is exploring entire phase space, it's basically the time evolution of the observable is equal to the uh, expectation value of the the is equal to micro canonical uh, average of the of the observable. So if we are uh, looking at it like if we decrease the in the in the time the energy window, then then the possible in which energy window in uh, uh, to which energy window do you refer they are like for the for the micro canonical like systems we have uh, the the system like can have a specific energy window which is like if like there is a, there is they there can be like a, um, a certain amount of fluctuation with expect like a average e plus or minus delta e so if the like the so the relevant eigenstates are then only from a one to n, uh, uh, and the rest of them is like they are not not except um, like we are okay, giving an energy cap uh, to the system. So these uh, so these I uh, metric sediments I then become like uh, con like they are they approximately are constant. That, so that was the, I don't know if I explained it or. Thank you. Um, and uh, okay, my second question uh, is about the the reset process uh, that, you, uh, that you implement. Um, so uh, does it change the energy of the system? So uh, every time you reset, are you changing the energy of the system? Uh, yeah, if I'm, yeah, I'm actually changing the energy of the system. Reset to the, the one one of the spins, no? So it should change yeah. the energy of the system, is it? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, and another, uh, that was just a doubt that I had. So, um, and then uh, you mentioned that sometimes in the uh, when so when you are in the thermalizing phase, you obtain a, a steady state in the dynamics, right? Yeah. Uh, is it possible to calculate this steady state, or uh, is what determines this steady state? Is it possible to calculate the steady state? Uh, I mean, it's, it's always the same steady state, or is if it's, so it's, it's always the same steady state? Sorry, uh, are you asking if it's always the same steady state? Yes, 
the, the study is the, the state is dependent on the, our input sequence. Here we are like the, resetting the state of the qubit i to uh, to one. So uh, what we are doing is basically the changing. So the the the, the two states are zero, cat zero, and cat one. Cat zero is representing uh, with the, the with K, when the system is in cat zero, the expectation value of sigma z is one. When a system is in cat one uh, state, this expectation value of a system is minus one. So the so what we are doing is the starting this qubit starting from the, the value one it will move towards the value minus one while this one was already in the minus one. Okay. And in the case okay. of MBL and uh, spin glass, these values do not move much towards each other. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So uh, finally. Uh, I was curious about the, uh, if you can mention about the, so you propose this as a method for proving dynamical. Uh, so I read in the, in, in your report that uh, you say that uh, since you only have to access local observables, that, that could be an improvement because you don't need so much computational resources. And, and I wanted to ask you about uh, what are the limitations that you think that the, this method uh, might have? Uh, so for example, sometimes you, you say that it's not uh, completely, so it, you say that it is reliable in, in most of cases, yeah. but I wanted to ask you when it's not reliable and, and if you can comment a little bit more about that. Like the, the result that I'm getting, uh, like in most of the cases, what I what I'm expecting the that the, the system is if it's an ergodic the the, the two trajectories do converge and if it's a not in the ergodic phase they do not converge. But sometimes like there is a noise uh, that 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 can be seen in one of the figures and the TFM, and uh, that might be like the I didn't check it actually, but that might be. Uh, attributed to the fact that I am not taking many re realizations and um, and of course we are looking at one qubit so if we are looking multiple qubits of this, the, the size of the subsystem is uh, is much much larger uh, not, not that much larger if the size of the system is larger then we can get like the exact um, how 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 the system is like mainly is um, behaving to the input sequence, the, 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 seek, the input, the feeding information of the input. Okay. Uh, can you say something about the how the accuracy of this compare with the previous method that you mentioned? Thermal activity and the other ones that you mentioned at the beginning? The th thermal conductivity and the, th the thermal conductivity, what I read is they are, uh, it's, it's not distinguishing the MBL phase from uh, spin glass. Like if, if the thermal conductivity is zero, it's zero in both MBL and in spin glass. So we are not basically able to uh, distinguish if it's if the system is an MBL or spin glass. Uh, we can only say that the system is ergotic or non-ergotic. And uh, the same the case for um, the entanglement entropy. And uh, the, the this this method is uh, actually like giving us a difference between the the two phases, the two the two localized phases. Okay. Thank you very much. So that I, I don't have any more questions. Thank you, Maybe I continue. I can take it from Gonzalo Leti. In the introduction, you showed these different techniques uh, yeah. to characterize the dynamical phases. And also in the different report, you enumerate them. Uh, the, the previous. Okay. Yeah, this one. So you have all these techniques, and in the written report, you explain them, but you don't compare them. And now, here, you are, now uh, after answering to Gonzalo, you start to compare them. Can you please say a few more words for the advantages and advantages of these other methods? Um, this the thing for the first. The, the, the first two is like it's uh, what, what I read about is that they are not distinguishing between the two localized phases. The second uh, and the, the, this one is basically the American value. Uh, the, the system that the model that I, I presented, like for this case, um, 
for this model, basically the uh, the numerical value of this the system is an and the ergodic is the numerical value will be closer to 0 0.53. Then the system is in the localized phase, it will be zero, uh, it will be like um, ranging from 0 0.38 uh, to 0 0.53. And this is basically when, uh, when the system is in the localized phase, uh, the system is basically integrable. And all integrable uh, systems are uh, uh, follow Poisson distribution. So, like the eigen values are like a kind of um, random uh, values from the Poisson distribution, while for the ergodic uh, phase, the system obeys like the random, the random matrix of. Um, uh, of our Gaussian or Cogdell ensemble. So this was uh, so, but, but I don't know. Like for for the rest of the system, like uh, and like for the uh, uh, I I know like exactly for my system. How is it distinguishing between the ergodic and non-ergodic phases? But uh, generally, I don't know like how uh, the system is distinguishing between these two phases. And uh, for this um, for this protocol. The, what they are doing is like they are perturbing the system. The system is like acting as a network. And when they are perturbing it, as the, if it's localized, then the, the mixing of the eigenvalues, which are represented as the vertices of the network, are much more compared to the, when the system is in the, in the localized region, where the, like, like the disturbance doesn't travel much and the, the eigenvalue distribution is not much affected compared to when the system is in the body. So it's like considered as a hopping problem. So more or less in summary, in many of these methods, you cannot distinguish the two localized uh, Yeah. And then the advantage of the, the proposal is this local observable. And you also mentioned this uh, uh, low computational cost. Can you estimate this in a more precise way? Um, what is the computational cost of the of the other approaches? So is it really less computational cost or is more intuitive in your approach? Um I find it like more intuitive, like it's easy to understand compared to the uh, these these two methods and uh, the computation. Uh, I don't know like the exact computational cost, but if it's like if we are looking at the entire system as well, uh, or if we are looking at the local observables, then um, of course the local observables like are easy to compute than compared to the. Then in the presentation and again in the written thesis, you show this. Uh, Qualitative results to the how the things how the density is about and of the, the different particles. And you mentioned that you could uh, an improvement of this would be to give it a more quantitative uh, to, to quantify these trajectories in a and in this kind of distance, I guess. Uh, what do you suggest as a more quantitative measure instead of just looking at the evolution? I mean, you go to the if you go to the results. I mean, and it is these qualitative trajectories. You look at these yeah. uh, plots. You have many different plots in the thesis, but this one is qualitative. So, if you want to quantify uh, and know precisely if a value to say in which uh, phase you are, what how can you add something a quantitative measure to this qualitative of the Did you think about that? Yeah. No, I don't. So maybe of distance of you mean uh, to quantify the convergence. Yeah, like we are looking at the that the that the, the, the distance is decreasing with the passage of time. And uh, but I, I haven't calculated the exact uh, exactly how much is the distance between there there is one example uh like here and in this case, like the, the distance is moving as this to the power minus two. But I don't know exactly. And okay, I don't have more to say, but I think it's just good. Maybe the problem is that for the presentation for the work that is prepared for your thesis. And there were a couple of questions. One of them is mostly related to the first question uh, raised by Gonzalo. If you go to the slide about the ergodicity to explain better the, what is really what's happening here, 
uh, what is O there? You didn't comment about the nature of O or the overlay of O. O are the local uh, local. So this is a, a local overlay. Yeah. Because what what happens if you take a, a, a global operator in this case instead of taking O? And I'm aware that uh, absorbs all the degrees of freedom of the system. Like the group. More specifically, if you take one eigen vector of the Johannes problem, what yeah. happens? This is an operator. So yeah, the, the like the, the global observable like energy is the, is the global observable. So if I but take, if take a, a vector of a global problem, what can you observe? So does yeah, this uh, kind of microcanonical ensemble emerge or not? For the, for the global observables? For a, for an United state, if your operator is the United state of the My whole system. My whole system state of the... Can you take its uh, mean value over time? Yeah. And do you what do you observe? For the ergodicity, it will still like follow the ergodic principle. For an ergodic state of the problem. You will never accept any relaxation to any steady state. It would oscillate in time forever. Okay, I have another question. You mentioned a couple of times uh, in the presentation the concept of this failing memory. Maybe also in this room, not everyone knows exactly what it is. Can you explain? The better? fading memory is basically uh, when we are inserting like a sequence of input to our system. We expect our system to train accordingly, and the output that we are that we will be getting is will depend on the recent history of the input sequence rather than it will depend on the initial state of the system. So if it is it is uh, like it is uh, reflecting the initial history of the um, the input sequence, then we are saying that the system is that the that the the memory of the initial state is uh, has been faded, and if the system like still retain its initial information. Then the system is unable to erase its in uh, its memory. Uh, we can go to the recording. Yes. yes. I don't know. So now we will uh, deliver and we will decide. Yes, from the uh, You can go to the side for, for some time. We are going to.